Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Ringo Frederick. In our class today, my good students, we are looking at financial management. And uh, before we go deep into financial management, I'll want us to understand this very clearly. For you to be a very good student of uh, financial management, and for you to say that uh, you are good in financial management, there are some specific areas that you just have to be very good at. This is regardless of financial management in whichever level that you are doing and whichever course that you are doing. You must be very, very good in the following areas. Number one, you must be very good when it comes to the time value of money. That is a time value of money. Basically, this is the foundation. This is the backbone of financial management. Everywhere, whenever you go to handle or rather whenever you'll be studying financial management, you'll find that one of the main foundation, one of the backbone of financial management is time value of money concept. These are must for you to be able to understand that clearly. Then the other key element that you must be very good at whenever it comes to financial management, this concept that you normally refer to as a valuation, valuation of securities, that is of course valuation of securities, valuation of securities or farms. You can refer to it as business, right? This is another key area that uh, you can't pass financial management if you're not good in the area of uh, valuation of securities, there's a valuation of uh, equity, valuation of, uh, valuation of ordinary shares, valuation of uh, preference shares, talk about valuation of uh, debentures and all that. You must be very good at that. The other key element that uh, you must be very good at, we normally refer to it as what? That is, of course, uh, that is of course uh, capital uh, budgeting. Capital budgeting. Capital budgeting, capital budgeting. This is another key area that you must be good. And I'm using the word you must be good. Let us not even use good, but you just have to be perfect. You just have to be perfect in that area. That is, of course, uh, capital, uh, capital uh, budgeting, capital budgeting, capital budgeting decisions, capital budgeting decisions, capital budgeting decisions, capital budgeting decisions here. And uh, lastly, uh, for you to also be very good in finance, you must also be very good in what you normally refer to as, uh, that is a capital structure decisions. Capital structure decisions. Talk about capital uh, structure decisions. Capital structure decisions. So these are the main areas that you're saying. Wherever you go, you must and you must be very good. And actually, in addition to that, let us add also portfolio analysis. Let us add portfolio analysis. Portfolio analysis. These are the foundation. These are the backbone. Whichever term that you can use to stress that, that is what you need. These are the areas that you must be good. And clearly, mark my tongue. We are saying you must be very good at these areas. Now, to make you understand the whole concept clearly, we start with the backbone, the backbone of financial management, which is time value of money. That is what Molimo wants to start with in our class today. Time value of money. That is the backbone, that is the backbone of financial management. So allow me to raise here. I've given you actually everything that you need to know for you to pass financial management. You must be very good in the areas that Molimo has listed here. And you find that uh, it's not only at the basic level of finance, also whenever you'll be talking of advanced level of finance, you just have to be good in these areas. So in our class today, my good students, I wanted us to focus on the backbone of financial management, and that is the time value of money. I know the concept that a majority of you, you've been uh, kind of, uh, you're familiar with that term, that is the time value of money. So today's class allowed us to dissect the concept time value of money and we can also clearly uh, give a distinction between time value of money and time preference of money. So 
Anytime we are talking about time value of money, what will come at the back of your mind the first thing, my good students? If I may ask this question as we are introducing this concept, I want you to approach it in a very practical angle, okay? Say at this point, I'm having, uh, compare these years, talk about 2015 and 2022. At this point, I'm going to give this status in uh, case of uh, Kenyan uh, economy or rather today where we are. If you had a thousand in 2015, and you're having a thousand in 2022. If I may ask this question, when was a thousand shillings more valuable? When was a thousand shillings more valuable if you compare the two years? You'll find that in 2015, at least you could have said that a thousand shillings could have purchased a bit of stuff, num quite a number of stuffs. Compared to, to today, if you're having a thousand shillings and you just spend like a 50 shillings, that thousand shillings is done. You don't have a thousand shillings again, right? So you'll find that uh, in this case, a thousand shillings was more valuable if you can use that word in 2015 compared to 2022. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that uh, at this point, uh, this cash has evolved. You can give so many reasons why the value of this thousand shillings has reduced. So many reasons. You have Ukraine war. We had COVID-19 that came and so many other economic factors that hit us hard to the point that it affected our values. And of course, the cost of living keeps on, keeps on rising. So you'll find that uh, this 1,000 shillings was more valuable in 2015, uh, more than in 2022. So the whole idea of uh, time value of money, it will come in that angle. I want you, I'm bringing, I'm taking you to a practical perspective so that you can relate with what Molimo want to uh, teach us today. So understanding that, you'll find that uh, the whole idea of uh, the time value of money basically will evolve around that. And that is where the premises of financial management actually is based on the concept of time value of money. So in this case, my good students, you'll find that uh, the whole concept of time value of money which uh, allow me to put it uh, there, time value of money, the concept of time value of money. Concept of uh, TVM. Concept of uh, TVM. You know that uh, basically this refers to the determination of the future value. It refers to the determination. This basically refers to the determination refers to the determination refers to the determination of future value which in this case my good i'm going to put into bracket the future value we are going to refer to it as what compounding future value in this case we are talking of compounding compounding and the present value and the present value and the present value and the present value which in this case my good students you are referring to this as what we are referring to this as discounting and the present value which you are referring to it as what as discounting discounting of expected cash flows 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 that's what we are referring to as the time value of money basically you're looking at uh, the determination of the future value which you're timing it as compounding and the present value which you're referring to it as discounting of the expected cash flows and at this point clearly let me ask this question i know majority of you might give me the same answer right if I told today, M. Darasa has decided to give you our good viewer and our good student, today we're having an option of you uh, of giving you uh, this cash today, and you're having an option of giving you this cash in December. Right? So today, in this case, uh, I can give you one million. I'm having an option of giving you one million today, and uh, also we're having an option of giving you one million in December. If I may ask, 
you, my viewer, and my good student, when will you wish us to give you this cash? Is it today or is it in December? Those are questions I'm asking you. Like, if at all today we decided that we are giving you an option of you kind of uh, getting this uh, cash, either today or December, we are offering one million. When will you prefer to have this money? Is it today or is it in December? I know majority of you will say that, Mwalimu, why don't you give us that cash today? And the reason if I may ask why should I give you this cash today, of course you'll say that I don't know about the future. I don't know what future holds for us. I don't know if I'm going to reach in December. I don't know what will have happened in the economy by the time you're reaching in December. I know the value of this one million in December will be much lesser compared to its value today. All these are the reasons that you're going to give Molimo, right? All these are the reasons that you're going to give Molimo in regard to in regard to uh, in regard to you receiving this uh, money either today or tomorrow. Now, in finance, what are we terming that concept that we just looked at here? Many a times, students will confuse it with the uh, value, time value. But in finance, there's this concept that normally refer to what as what time preference of money. There's this concept that normally refer to it as what time preference for money. Time preference for money. That is, of course, time preference. Time preference for money. Time preference for money. Time preference for money. Don't confuse it with time value of money. You've looked at uh, what time value of money entails. Now we are talking of time preference of money. So anytime you're talking about uh, time preference for money, my good students, anytime you're talking about time preference for money, time preference for money is the desire to have money today rather than in future. Desire of having money today rather than in future. That is what you are referring to as what? The time preference for money. Also a very key concept in finance. Also a very key concept in finance. Time uh, preference for money. That is desire of us having money today rather than in future. And if I may ask the reason why. I know you're having a lot of reasons which you can give Molimu. You're having a lot of reasons which you can give Molimu. Now today, my good students, we are seeing that this is a very special class. And why is it a very special class? It is a very special class because I want us to analyze techniques for time value of money. Techniques that are used for time value of money. So talk about techniques. Talk about techniques. Techniques. Techniques that are used. Techniques used in time value of money. Techniques used in time value of money. Whereby we want to determine the future value of money and the present value of money. Determination of the future value, which we refer to it as compounding, and the present value, which we are referring to it as a, a discounting of the expected cash flows, of the expected cash flow. So looking at this technique, my good students, what should always come at the back of your mind is that we normally tend to talk of two techniques. And the techniques already we've given them in our definition, in this case, we normally tend to talk of number one technique, which we are referring to it as compounding. We are referring to this as what? Compounding technique. And number two, we are referring to this other technique known as what? Discounting technique. Discounting technique. So basically, these are the techniques that we normally tend to use in what? In the time value of money. And our special class today, we will be dissecting the first one, which we are referring to it as what? As compounding technique. That is what I want us to dissect. I know at times students normally tend to say, Molimo, why do you normally tend to start with a lot of stories? It's no, these are no stories, right? These are building blocks to make sure that you've understood this concept clearly because our class is always about what? Concept. It's not just a matter of studying. For us, we normally tend to learn. That's why Molimo will always give us a foundation of something even before we proceed. So we are saying that we're having two techniques, compounding technique and discounting technique. So let us analyze the first one, compounding technique, and see what that entails, and see what that entails. By now, I know if a person asks you to distinguish between time value of money and time preference of money, you can clearly give this distinction with a lot of confidence, right? 
So let us analyze compounding technique. Let us analyze what you're referring to as compounding techniques. Let us analyze what you're referring to as compounding techniques. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are, of course, a uh, single compounding technique. So when you are talking of compounding technique, my good students, what should come at the back of your mind first? Because by now we've said that we are looking at either uh, looking at the future value, or in this case, we are, compare, or we are looking at what? The current value, future or current value. So, <clears throat> what will constitute compounding? Just from the definition that we had stated earlier on, anytime you are talking of compounding, my good students, we are looking at, we are looking at, uh, of course, determination of uh, the equivalent. This is basically determination of the equivalent future value of present cash flows. This is what you're terming as compounding. If possible, I'm going to put it down. We are talking of, uh, it involves determining the equivalent future value. This is just basically determination, determination of future value, of future value of present cash flows, determination of the future value, determination of future value of present cash flows, of present cash flows, of present cash flows. Simply, this is what we are referring to as compounding. We want to determine our present value or rather our cash flow today. How much will our cash flow today worth in 10 years time? How much will our cash today worth in three months' time? How much will our cash today worth in five years' time? This is what we are referring to as determination of future value of present cash flows. If I'm having a thousand shillings today, how much will this amount worth in three months? If I'm having a thousand shillings today, how much will this worth in 2023? And that's why we started by uh, that's why I started by asking whereby uh, we were looking at that scenario. I was saying that if at all I was to give you this cash today, and I'm having an option of giving you this cash in December, when will you prefer to have that cash? Right. So the same concept you are relating it here, whereby we are saying that now looking at it, remember that was wishing, and now we are looking at value. How much will this much worth? How much will this a thousand worth? in three years time that is what we are referring to as a compounding technique future value and we'll find that at this point normally ten talk of uh, two concepts under compounding that is of course this one of course uh, it has two aspects the first aspect is a uh, future value at a lump sum talk about future value future value at a lump sum future value at a lump sum and number B, we normally talk of future value of an annuity. 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 Mm -hmm. These are the sex. These are basically two aspects of the compounding technique. Let us analyze the first one. Future value to lump sum and see what this entails. You are starting with the first one. Future value, we are starting with the first one, that is, of course, future value at a lump sum. Mm -hmm. So, when we are looking at future value at a lump sum, my good students, this is what I always want us to have in mind. Talk about future value, future value at a lump sum, future value at a lump sum. Anytime you're talking of lump sum, basically you're looking at what? Once you're receiving it at it pop. All of it at once, all of it at once, all of it at once, right? I'm giving you a lump sum amount. I'm giving you all this at at once. You've invested in a fixed deposit account. You're depositing your cash for, say, like a year. So when you are going to kind of withdraw this cash, you're doing it at once, right? At once, lump sum. So in this case, anytime you read about the future value at a lump sum, basically, you'll find that, uh, first of all, you should understand that lump sum refers to receipt or payment of a fixed amount of cash 
only once. That is what we should have in mind that this basically refers to receipt or payment. This basically refers to receipt or payment, receipt or payment, receipt or payment, receipt or payment of a fixed amount of cash of a fixed of a fixed amount of a fixed amount of cash of a fixed amount of cash only once only once and this can either be only once at the beginning at the beginning or at the beginning of the period at the beginning at the beginning or at the end or at the end of the period or at the end of the period very key to understand very key to understand that you're talking of receipt or payment of a fixed amount of cash only once at beginning or at the end of the period that is very key that is very key that you do understand that is very key that you do understand that again other key element that i want us also to understand my good students in terms of lump sum lump sum can also be periodic payment but an equal amount so lump sum can also be periodic of an equal amount periodic payment periodic payment or receipt or receipt of an equal an equal amount of an equal amount that is to say at this point my good students i'm receiving this amount at the beginning or at the end of the period say year one year two maybe year three year one maybe i'm receiving hundred thousand year two maybe i'm receiving hundred and fifty thousand year three maybe i'm receiving eighty thousand so you'll find that this can also refer to as what in uh, time value of money uh under future value in this case we find that this can also be referred to as what the technique will be the technique that we're going to use is for lump sum the technique that we're going to use is for lump sum whereby i'm receiving periodic payment or a receipt of an equal amount of an equal amount of an equal amount very key that you grasp that very key that we understand that that we understand that now this is the most important area how will we determine the future value of money lump sum lump sum take a good example uh, recall what you are doing uh, back then either in high school or at your basic level of mathematics uh, in this case the whole concept of uh, determining the amount uh, they talk about the concept of uh, you determining the principal amount right where we are talking about uh, aspect of uh, simple compounding that is of course simple compounding formula let me use that term simple compounding formula that you did at your basic level where if you can clearly recall because i know if i may ask right now you start scratching your head amount how are we determining amount of course for me to determine the amount that i should be having as at the end of the day simple compounding i know very well i should be talking of my principal here we normally tend to talk of our principal in this case, you are going to multiply with 1 plus the rate that you are given raised to power n. That is what we use to refer to as an aspect of simple compounding. If you can recall what you did at your basic level, right? What you did at your basic level. The same, same concept, my good students, I want us to relate this concept in determining our future value. I want us to relate the same, same concept in determining our future value. So this amount, let us replace it with what we want to determine. We want to determine the future value. We want to determine the future value. So you are replacing amount with FV standing for future value. Principal, let us, re uh, let us replace it with what? The present value of the cash flow that you are having today. <coughs> Excuse The present value of the cash flow that we are having today. We are replacing it with amount. Of course, these other things will be the same. 1 plus R raised to power N. So clearly, this will give us the formula of future value of cash flow, lump sum, lump sum. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be having. And one will say, Molimu, why don't we do an illustration question to cement this concept? And that's what I want us to do now, an illustration question. 
a very simple illustration question, a very simple illustration question, whereby in this case, uh, probably we can just uh, put it down, probably for those who are putting it down, uh, we can mention briefly and say that an investor has deposited, listen to this clearly, an investor has deposited 10,000 in a fixed deposit account. So you're talking of an investor has deposited, uh, this is an exercise. These are just a simple illustration to make us understand this case. We're saying that an investor has deposited 10,000 in a deposit account, in a fixed deposit account. An investor has deposited shillings 10,000 in a fixed deposit account. In a fixed deposit account. In a fixed deposit account. Okay? Which attracts an interest attracting an interest attracting an interest attracting an interest of 16% attracting an interest at a rate of 16% at a rate of 16% at a rate of 16% per annum 16% per annum 16% per, per annum if the investor if the investment period is 10 years so investment period here investment period we are talking of 10 years. This is our investment period. Investment period is 10 years. Investment period is 10 years. So, required here, we need to calculate the future value of this 10,000. So, required at this point, required, my good students, I want us to calculate the future value. I want us to calculate the future value. Calculate future value. Calculate future value. Assuming, number one, Calculate future value assuming number one, interest is earned annually. Interest is earned annually. Interest is earned annually. And number two, interest is earned semi annually. Interest is earned. Interest uh, is earned annually. And number two, interest is earned semi annually. Interest is earned semi annually interest is earned semi annually so given such a question my good students you should smile so we want to use our lump sum because at this point you can clearly see that uh, at this point uh, this person was investing 10 years 10000 a fixed deposit account at an interest rate of 16% per annum uh, investment is for 10 years so you need to calculate the amount the future value of this 10,000 assuming that interest is earned annually and number two, interest is earned semi-annually. So given such a question, where are you going to start from? First of all, my good students, you should smile. Why should you smile? You should smile because at this point you have everything, right? The first scenario, I want us to handle it. We are assuming that this interest is earned annually. Interest is earned Annually, interest is earned annually. Interest is earned annually. How will you go about it? We have our formula here. We have our formula here. We have our formula here. That will be simple because I just be taking my future value, which will be equal to my present value today is ten thousand shillings into one plus rate, which in this case rate is sixteen percent, zero point one six, raised to power n number of period is ten years. That will be very simple as that, right? So if I can pick my calculator, 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 this is what we'll be having. This is what you should be having, my good students. Where is my calc? I should be talking, of course, of uh, 10,000. That is, of course, uh, I'm having, first of all, 1 plus 0 0.16 raised to power raised to power 10 raised to power 10 raised to power 10 i'm having four uh of course times 10,000. this should give me a figure of molimo here is getting a figure of what 44,114.35 that is what molimo is getting 44,114.35 then another item that we should understand, we are also asked for semi-annually. If at all this interest is earned semi-annually. If at all this interest is earned semi-annually. If it is earned semi-annually, what are we going to do? 
I should recall that therefore all our periods, in this case, first of all, it will be twice. It will be twice compared to the original. So that is to say that my period here, if I'm earning this interest twice, my period will be 10 by 2. And therefore my interest is being earned semi-annually. Interest for the whole year, we had 16%. So therefore semi-annually, if we divide by 2, that should give us what? 8%. All the other things will remain to be the same. Therefore, my future value here, or future value, very confidently, very confidently, I can come and say that my future value will be equal to 10,000, of course, into 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to power what? Raised to power 20. So, in this case, we find that I should be having what? 1 plus 0 0.08 uh, raised to power 20. In this case, times what? Times 10,000. Therefore, I should be having 46,609. 46,609.57. 0.57. So that is what we should be having. That is what we should be having as what? As our, as our value semi-annually. And also, when you are talking about what? Annually. That is what the examiner wanted us to determine. I know a very curious student might ask, might ask Molemu, why do we have the difference between these two values, 44,000 and 46,000? If I may ask you, what do you think could be the difference? Because realize here that uh, if, we, uh, if we are earning it annually, my figure is 44,000. If you're earning it semi-annually, my figure is 46,000. Meaning that semi-annually will give us more cash, more interest than if you're earning it annually. So what could be the reason there? The reason my good students will find that uh, the difference is basically caused by the compounding effect. That is, uh, of course, uh, in essence, any time after the first period, interest is earned on the interest and the principal amount invested Hence, the more number of periods, the higher the interest. The more number of periods, the higher the interest. That's why you'll see that here I'm having what? A higher value compared to, compared to the first one. That was compounding future value for lump sum. Now, once you're done with that, allow us to proceed and also look at what? And look at annuity. And look at annuity. And look at annuity. I want us to proceed and look at what, and look at annuity, and look at annuity, and see what we'll be having. So for annuity, I'm going to do very, at least a question again, for you guys to have the knowledge clearly. Okay? So, let me jump to the next, believing that the first one, you've grasped it very correctly. So jumping to the next here, we are talking of, uh, of course, uh, future value of an annuity. Future value of an annuity. That is, of course, uh, Future value of an annuity. Future value of an annuity. Future value of an annuity. Very important. Very important that we should understand. That. Future value of an annuity. So, one key thing that I want us to understand is the term annuity. That will be very important that we understand. The term annuity. So when you are talking of annuity, basically, my good students, what do you need to understand here? Basically, annuity refers to uh, receipt. This refers to receipt, refers to receipt or payment, refers to receipt or a payment, refers to receipt or payment, refers to receipt or payment, or fixed amount of cash flows, or fixed amount of fixed amount of cash flows or fixed amount of cash flows or fixed amount of cash flows or fixed amount of cash flows over a given period of time 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 that is uh, basically in essence it refers to periodic payments of equal amount. It refers to periodic payment of equal amount over a given period of time. Say, for example, this is what Monimo is saying. Assuming I'm talking of year one, year two, year three. 
equal amount receipt of payment if it is 100000 it will be equal all through it will be equal all through 100000 100000 100000 that's what you're referring to as what that's what you're referring to as an annuity compared to lump sum where we also refer to it as what a periodic payment of an equal amount periodic payment of an equal amount that was lump sum for annuity we are talking of what refers to receipt or payment of fixed amount of cash flows over a given period of time fixed fixed amount and basically you are talking of what equal in other words you're saying that it refers to periodic payment of equal amount for a given duration for a given duration meaning that at this point it made at the, it can either be received or paid at the end or at the beginning of the year the most important thing that I want us to understand, my good students, in this class is how to determine, how to determine the future value of an annuity. How to determine the future value of an annuity. That is the most important thing that I want us to determine. So to determine the future value of an annuity, actually I can have it with my blue pen so that you know the point of emphasis. So to determine our future value, of an annuity, I'm going to have my present value. We multiply this one by future value interest factor annuity. Given the percentage, given the rate, and number of years. The good question will be, how will you determine the future value interest factor annuity? To determine my future value interest factor annuity given the rate number of years this word must stick and sink at the back of our mind very well we normally tend to talk of the following in this case i can take my other pen we normally tend to talk of course of a one plus r raised to power one period in this case i need to less one we are going to divide all this by what by r we're going to divide all that by r we're going to divide all that by r so that is what will give us that is what will give us what that is what will give us what you're referring to as future value uh interest factor annuity so therefore in other words very briefly we are saying that for me to determine my future value it as if you are talking of my present value here we multiply by 1 plus r raised to power n minus 1. We divide by r. This is what Molimu is saying. And to cement the concept clearly, it will be very appropriate that we look at a question. 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 We look at a question here. We look at a question which will enable us to understand this clearly. So I'm going to pose this question for us here. This is our question. You can start with question number. You can start with question number one. 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 Look at illustration question number one. At this point, these are what you are told that calculate the future value of one shillings invested at the end of each year at an interest rate of twelve percent per annum for five years. For five years, for five years. So, again, I'll want to be very, very clear here. My good students, I want us to be very, very clear here. In the event that you're talking of, uh, of course, uh, this formula here, we normally tend to look at it in two ways. That is, payment or receipt at the end, which you normally term it as, uh, of course, uh, ordinary annuity. We normally tend to talk of it as ordinary annuity ordinary annuity basically this is receiving or paying uh, this amount at the end of the period at the end of the period this is what you are referring to as what ordinary annuity we normally also tend to talk of annuity due annuity annuity due annuity due basically refers to receipt or payment of this amount at the beginning of the period at the beginning of the period at the beginning of the period that is what also you must also be very keen to distinguish 
like when you are given a case, identify if you are getting this amount at the end of the period or as at the beginning of the period. When it is at the beginning of the period, what you are going to add basically here is only what? If it is at the beginning of the period, that is annuity due. In this factor of hours, you are only going to add 1, of course, plus R. We are going to multiply by 1 plus R. That is annuity due at the beginning of the period. At the beginning of the period. Using this illustration, I want us to work both at the beginning and at the end of the year. So this is a very simple illustration question which I've shared with us there. And I want to leave it there so that all of us you can be able to view it. Illustration question number one. Illustration question number one. Illustration question number one is our focus of our session here, right? So in this case, I need to calculate the future value of that amount, which is one shilling. That is, that is a very direct. So uh, these are what I want us to do so that you should be able to understand this concept clearly. So that you should be able to understand this concept clearly. So you are talking of uh, we need to calculate uh, that amount. You need to calculate the future value of one shillings invested at the end of each year at an interest rate of 12% per annum for five years. So this is what you are going to do, my good students. Of course, I'm going to take our future value, which in this case should be present value today is one. We are investing this, of course, for how many years? We are investing this for five years. So I should be having, I'm following our formula here. We're going to have, we multiply by one plus R, which is in this case 12%, 0 0.12 raised to power, uh, raised to power N, which N is how many years? Five years. In this case, of course, minus one. We divide all this by R, which is 0 0.12. So let us determine first of all our present value interest factor annuity. What are we going to do? Of course, that will be simple. I'll just be taking my 1.12 raised to the power 5 minus 1. I divide this one by 0 0.12. Uh, that is, of course, 1.12 raised to the power, negative, raised to the power 5 minus 1. I divide this one by 0 0.12. Of course, this should give me what? So I'm going to get this figure, our factor here. My factor I'm going to get 6.35. That is our factor, right? So therefore, my future value in this case, that would be simple. I'll just be having 1 times 6.35. To eight, which in this case, of course, should give us what the same amount 6.35 to 8. So, if I invest one shillings today and it is earning an interest rate of 12 percent, as at the end of five years, I'll be having six shillings point three five to eight. Compounding, I'm determining this amount in future. And recall, the examiner was very specific at the end of each year. What about if it was at the beginning of each year? If it was at the beginning of each year, my good students, what is going to change? I'm just going to take this factor of hours at the beginning, 6.3528 times 1.12. That is to say, in this case of hours, I'm going to add what? 1, uh, 1 plus 1 plus uh, 0 0.12. That is what you are going to add. So that is to say, if we are to talk of as at the beginning of the year, I should be having this case of hours, which would give us how much? I should be talking of uh, my amount uh, times 1.12 to give us, of course, at the end, should give us at the beginning of the year, I should be having 7.1152. That's what we'll be having if it was at the beginning of the year. So my good students, this is what you're supposed to do. So uh, kindly at this point, uh, Molimu will take a break. And when we meet next, we will be handling, you see this question of ours, we are going to handle all these questions. We are going to handle all these questions. I'm going to attach this question just below this video so that you can also download it and have it with you guys. So that point, thank you so much.
and we can meet in our next session. Thank you, guys. Let us meet in our next session.